Okay. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good, good. It's nice seeing you. I know we've been talking back and forth, but we never actually got to say hello. Yeah. Okay. Hi. You look so beautiful and so well, radiant, you. and I love the color <laughs> on you. So this is great. Thank you so much. This yeah, actually, my signature color. Every single dance dress I have is always red. So, <laughs> well, red looks great on stage as well, right? And uh, it. Really you, you can never go wrong with red and yellows. So, yeah. I'm in yellow, and you're in red, and this is a great yeah. start. I um, are you ready? I think we have enough people there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Let's go for it. Okay, all right. We just want to start off with saying, uh, you know, give our namaskarams to the Lord, uh, because it is our first uh, event that we are starting, mm -hmm. and it's always nice to say hello to the man in charge. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, <the dance. laughs> so I am a pretty um, casual, relaxed um, artist or event person, as far as yeah. the classical dance is concerned. Yeah. I think it's just, uh, I mean, it's not that I'm, I, I'm a Kuchipudi dancer. I used to be, at mm -hmm. least I don't. I was, I learned how to go to Vempati Chino Satyam. Oh, um, nice, nice. And uh, I was there for some amount of time, but then after that, long story short, I'm here and I'm on the back mm -hmm. end and I love it. And I love it. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, let's start. Let's start with you. Yeah. Oh, well, well, I think, let me see if I can, Is I hope this is better. Can you hear me now? better yes thank you. okay all right okay so i will uh turn off the comments for just a minute um so that um but anyway let's talk so tell us about yourself you just just tell me i know you're yeah. in california and i know you're a kujipudi dancer but apart from that just give us a little idea of what you do yeah, so contrary to what a lot of people think, I'm actually not a full-time dancer. I do have a day job. Um, I am I coordinate research at a children's hospital during the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I come back, I dance. And um, I also dabble in a bit of music production, a lot of vocals processing. I used to, I actually learned uh, Carnatic music for 16 years um, mm -hmm. before I took up dance um, you know, full-time, full-time. Full <laughs> right, right, um, right. And so... My um, foundations in Carnatic music actually really helped me um, in dance um, and definitely in more of the music production things that I do as well. Um, so definitely learning that on the side. Um, I also do uh, photography. I also do film. Um, definitely anything in the arts related, I definitely have my hands full in that. So um, okay. anything, anything arts related, I am a part of. So. Um, yeah, it's it's nice to be able to to kind of exercise my brain in so many different ways, <laughs> just to keep the creativity rolling. Sometimes I feel, especially for me, um, I don't like falling into a rut of just focusing on one thing. I feel like that really just kind of closes my mind off. And so I'm always trying to do experiment with so many different things. And um, I learn so much along the way. And then I can implement that in my dance as well. So um, definitely, definitely have my hands full. <laughs> yeah, no, it's I, I don't think any artist is uh, single dimensional either, right? I mean, without mm -hmm, yes. us knowing, we want to explore and we want to kind of translate what we know into something else, some other form. Yeah. And uh, stifling any part of that it makes us go crazy, I think. Absolutely, at least. yeah. Crazy is the word for it, honestly. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I think there's, because you do so much, I do have one question. Uh, so mm -hmm. the thing is, if you know how we are in a flow right like and you you get into dancing and you're you forget time and you're just dancing yeah. um how do you manage time because i think yeah. that is the biggest challenge uh, mm -hmm. and i'm not even like you know i'm not young and i in the sense as in i don't have the immediate things that a lot of you children do uh, mm -hmm. so how do you how do you manage time with this yeah big question everyone asks me that question and sometimes i surprise myself as well just I mean, I don't necessarily keep track of everything that I do. Only when people ask me like this, right, I start to remember, oh, I do this also. I do that also. Um, definitely, I'm a big, I've always been very big on organization and keeping myself in check and writing everything out. Sometimes to the point where I have to write out, eat lunch or do right. the dishes or, you know, make sure you send this email. 
because I will forget. I genuinely will forget. So every day, um, at least for 20, 30 minutes every morning, I will make sure to write down everything that needs to be done the day of, what needs to be done by tomorrow, what needs to be done by the end of the week. Um, and I really keep myself on on track. I never used to be this way, by the way. Um, when I was in college, everything was just <laughs> all over the place. Um, but it's definitely something that I picked up after I got out of college. And I was like, what am I, what am I doing with my life? Let me try to get something in order. Um, so writing everything down, keeping myself in check, making sure that if I write something down, I'll even write down how much time it'll take me to get it done. Right. So by one o'clock, I need to finish this. If I don't do it now, it's never going to get done. And so right. I, I put myself in that position of kind of forcing myself to finish a task. And that's honestly how I get it all done. I yeah. genuinely don't have any other, any other trips. <laughs> no, or, like, I know. Trip it's that. actually down, it boils down to a science, right? Like this whole, yeah. how do you be productive? It just literally mm -hmm. is like taking that pen and pad and writing it down. Sometimes I write it mm -hmm. down more than typing it because I think mm -hmm. viscerally it helps as well. But yeah, it that's... really kind of knocks it into your brain that this <laughs> needs to be done. <laughs> So, <laughs> true, yeah. true. So, okay, a quick uh, question about your dance. So, when mm -hmm. when did you start? Who's your guru? Um, and just talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. So I started when I was eight or nine. I can't remember the exact um, time frame. But uh, my guru is uh, Jyoti La Guru Jyoti Lakaraji Garu um, from Bay Area, California. Born and brought up in California, so um, definitely um, learned from her, um, and I still continue to learn from her. Um, and I was kind of the older kid in the class. I think generally people start, at least in that class, people started when they were five, four. So um, I was I was the older kid in the class, and. Um, that kind of didn't really help me with my motivation. When I was young, I really didn't want to be in dance class um, purely because I didn't really feel like I fit in. Mm -hmm. And also my, my parents really put me in a lot of different activities. And there used to be this trend of I'd start a class, throw a tantrum, and then quit. So <laughs> it, I just thought, you know, maybe dance is going to be one of those things too where it's like, okay, I'm joining. But in a year from now, I'm quitting, so it's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I didn't really put my heart and soul into it. Um, but over the years, somehow that, that quitting period of time never really came. I threw tantrums, but I didn't really feel like quitting. Mm -hmm. um, so within a few years, after my first major performance, my first, not major, my first temple performance. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But for me, it was major because it was a big, right. the first yeah. time getting on stage, mm -hmm. right? So um, after that performance, um, my uh, I um, someone came up to me. I did a performance of uh, Narasimha, or just depicting the story of Narasimha and Hiranyakashipa. And I remember so vividly after that performance. Like I said, I was in the I was in the, I was taller than all the other kids at the time. Not anymore, but at the time I was taller. Yeah. So I was in the back. I didn't think anybody would notice me, but. Um, after that performance, so many people came up to me and were like, your depiction of Narasimha was so vivid and so amazing that I was like, really? You paid attention to me? <laughs> so um, I I, I'll, I'll never forget that moment because I think that was the first spark of like, hey, maybe maybe I'm, I have something here. Mm -hmm. um, so from then onwards, I actually ended up, so not only did I learn from Guru Jyoti Lakaraju, I also learned from Dr. P. Ramadevi in Hyderabad, India. So I regularly go to India to train with her and I learned some rare items such as Gola Kalapam. I don't mm -hmm. think we generally hear of Gola Kalapam. We know Bhama Kalapam, but we don't right. know Gola Kalapam. Mm -hmm. And so I learned um, Gola Kalapam with her and I was able to present that with her on a big stage. Um, and I also learned from Adhanari Shram Venkat sir and um, Uma Murli, Dr. Uma Murli Krishna. Um, mm -hmm. Again, same rare items, Adhanari Shuram, Mayura Kautvam, um, and all of those pieces. And honestly, it was my mom. She kind of pushed me and was like, you should do this. <laughs> and so I, 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 and I just like, argued back, actually. Normally, 99% of the time, I'd be like, no, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but whenever it came to dance, I just said, okay, let's go, let's do it, let's do it. And so from then onwards, she put in so much time and so much effort. She fought for me, actually, um, to be able to learn such rare items as well. Um, because especially gurus from India, I think 
um, they are, first of all, there's this like stereotype among Western um, American girls or American boys right. learning yes. classical dance. They, yeah. There's this like, no, they don't know anything about our culture. Why should they learn? Why are we wasting our time? Mm -hmm. So my mom really fought for me in that sense in that she's like, no, no, no. She's very serious about dance and please give her an opportunity. And so from then, once they saw, they were like, oh, okay, I guess so. Come, let's learn. <laughs> so um, I, I, I really am grateful for, for their time and their patience in that aspect. And I continue to learn from them as well whenever I have time or whenever we can video chat or something like that. So, um, yeah, that's kind of where it went. And then the second spark of interest or second spark of, you know, motivation for me mm -hmm. was when um, in there's a national organization called Young Arts, mm -hmm. which, again, my mom encouraged me to to apply for it. I had absolutely no idea what this was. And mm -hmm. I genuinely did not want to apply either because it was right in the middle of college applications. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm focusing on college applications. Mm -hmm. This is not happening. But she pushed me to do it. And finally, the last minute, the last possible second, I submitted that application. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what it was. Still, I had no idea what it was. Then afterwards, I had some time. Where I'm like, let me actually look into what I just applied to. I'm just curious. And I found out that this was a national organization that gives recognition to artists, who are young artists, right. who are dedicated in their field, who have reached a certain level in their field. And, um, you know, they're invited to all these workshops with master, master artists. And, you know, they get to perform on a national stage. And I had no idea. I was like, Really? <laughs> I, well, I think I would get it. I was like, okay, at least I submitted it. Said that I did, nice. I'm done. A month later, I get a call saying that um, I quote, I literally quote because I will never forget this day. The guy calls me and he goes, "My dear, you are a finalist for the National Advancements wow. in the Arts in Dance for 2012." And I remember my parents were kind of standing there, like, "What are you doing at 6 a.m. in the morning?" And I'm like. I got it. <laughs> no, it was really yes. funny, Aww. and uh, I'll never forget that. So once I actually went there and no, re realized how much people are so dedicated to the arts and right. how much they actually, as a representative for class Indian classical dance as well, it was so humble. It was such a humbling experience for me, and yeah. to see the kind of response that Kuchipudi dance got on yeah. that stage mm -hmm. when I was performing that's I will that's like etched in my heart like I will never forget um, that and that was another spark for me I was like I need to continue this this is right. this is I have I have such a platform and I have right. such support from these right. people that there's no way I'm going to stop now and so right. um that was that was kind yeah. of like the real big push <laughs> into, yeah. into no, we like, need we need more Kuchipudi to be represented out there. I mean, absolutely, yeah. but I just feel like uh, when I when I see a true Kuchipudi dance, I mean, it just moves you so much. There's just yeah. every yeah. aspect. Not that others don't have it, but I just mm -hmm. feel like it's still so much way to go as far as representation concerned. Mm -hmm. And also about how the world sees us, you know, like mm -hmm. there are so many who go like, oh, Kuchipudi, okay. But Bharatanatyam gets that. I mean, not to compare, you know, but every, I mean, Bharatanatyam is great, but then Kuchipudi mm -hmm. has its own beauty. And I just, and honestly, Tandavam was more about, because I'm a Kuchipudi dancer, my daughters both are mm -hmm. Kuchipudi. So I was like, okay, we yes. need to do something about Kuchipudi here. Absolutely. And even yeah. just in the last like, eight years, I think, just since when, you know, Young Arts happened, mm -hmm. I feel like there's been a gradual increase in the number of Kuchipudi dancers as well. And I think um, we are getting there. We are going yes. to, we are going to be recognized as well as an Indian classical art form in the Western world. Correct. So, um, I think we're definitely moving in a great, in a right. good trajectory. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. no, we will. We will get there. It's just that more of us have to believe in that and, you know, uh, throw ourselves yeah. into it and then, yeah, we'll be there. So this mm -hmm. is great. Um, okay. So tell us what you're going to be performing for us. Yeah, so I'm actually going to be showing you uh, Pravesha Daru from Bhama Kalapa mm -hmm. and as well as a uh, Daru that comes after uh, Pravesha mm -hmm. Daru. So Bhama Kalapa is, as we all know, especially if you're a Kuchipuri dancer, you will know um, that um, it is the entry of Satyabhama. It actually, mm -hmm. Kalapa means 
um, the depiction of an, of an episode and going through the different emotions with the characters and having a, and seeing the conversation between um, uh, two different characters. And in this case, in what I'll be presenting, it is um, the conversation between Satyabhama and mm -hmm. Madhuri. Mm -hmm. um, Satyabhama is the daughter of King Satrajitu, and she is one of the wives of Krishna, Lord Krishna. And she is very proud of her long braid and she's very proud of her heritage. She's proud of the, the fact that she is um, Krishna's wife. And um, the episode of Bahama Kalapam, the entire production of Bahama Kalapam is actually, um, the abridged version is uh, one to two hours long. Right. Um, so it, it, that's the abridged version. Before, in the olden days, it used to go on for a couple of days, and um, it, each episode would take, like, you know, a night, literally. And so um, I'll be showing you kind of an excerpt from that. Um, and the the purpose of Bhama Kalapam is actually to show, Siddhendra Yogi wrote Bhama Kalapam to show that there is a union between the self and the Paramatma, and to be able to reach that level you need to re get rid of your ego um and that's the only way satyabhama and krishna will unite and so um madhavi uh, as i mentioned the character of madhavi exists is, is actually a fictional character that Siddhendra yogi wrote to help satyabhama get rid of her ego mm -hmm. so the conversation between satyabhama and madhavi satyabhama is very like please bring my lord back to me we had a fight mm -hmm. And, um, and I, long, I, I can't live without him. Um, and so please help me, you know, bring him back to me. And Madhavi tries in very cunning ways to say, I don't know who your Lord is. Who, who I, you have to describe him to me. She, she, and Satyabhama tries to describe. She goes, he's the, he's the one who holds the Shankha. He's the one who holds the Chakra. He's the one who has the crocodile style earrings. Um, and Madhavi pretends, she pretends, she knows who, who, who her right. husband is, but she pretends, I don't know, I don't know, I, I think it's that guy, I think it's that guy, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. um, but finally Madhavi says, you know what, why don't you tell me his name? Mm -hmm. And Satyabhama is so incredibly shy, and it, old, in the olden days, you never used to speak your husband's name, you right. never said your mm -hmm. husband's name out of respect for him. Mm -hmm. So in the same way, Satyabhama is, says, how, how I cannot say his name. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have so much respect for my husband. And so the daru that I show after the conversation between Satyabhama and Madhavi is going to be Sigai Namadaru, which is basically, I'm so shy. Please, oh. I don't utter I don't I don't my husband's name. Mm -hmm. And um, since I was a child, I have never spoken of another man's name. And so I'll be showing that Daru um, and the Pravesha Daru as well. So Okay, um, great. Can't wait. That was a great explanation. Thank you, Thank you so Thank much. You. Now, how um, this is a technique.